<clears throat> Unit 15, Equilibrium. This is pages 160 to 166. This is going to be Advanced Equilibrium Calculation. So we have a 5-liter flask that is initially loaded with 0.8 moles of water in the gaseous phase and 0.4 moles of carbon monoxide gas. The reaction occurs at a temperature of 1650 degrees Celsius and the system achieves equilibrium with an equilibrium constant of 4.2. Calculate the partial pressure of the carbon monoxide gas when it's at equilibrium. So here's our equation and we can go ahead and write our mass law of mass action for this. So it's going to be the Kc equals we'll have the concentration of water times the concentration of carbon monoxide all over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of carbon dioxide. We are also told that the Kc here is equal to 4.2 so I'll just kind of pull that out for reference later. So let's make our ice table and we're told that initially we have 0.8 moles of water in a 5 liter flask and remember we need this to be a molarity and so when you take moles and you divide by liters that gives us molarity and the carbon monoxide is going to be 0.4 moles over 5 liters and that's going to equal molarity. So since this is what we have initially it means we can assume we have zero of these. So we can tell that the system is moving toward the left, which means we're going to have minus x minus x of these two, 1x and 1x, and we're going to have positive x and positive x, 1 because of the coefficients and positive because this is what is appearing and these are what are disappearing. So at equilibrium we have x, x, and when I divide or do the math right here, I get 0 0.16 minus x and here I get 0 0.08 minus x when I divide these two I get 0.08. So now I'm going to go ahead and set up my law of mass action to solve for x. So we have 4.2 equals then we're going to have 0 0.16 minus x times 0 0.08 minus x all over x times x. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this and that's going to get me, in, uh, so this is x squared. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared. That'll give me 4.2x squared equals. I'm going to go ahead and foil these two with one another. That's going to give me 0 0.0128 minus 0.24x plus x squared. Now I'm going to move everything to the left side starting with subtracting x squared from both sides of the equation. That's going to give me 3.2x squared. I'm going to add 0.24x to both sides and I'm going to subtract 0.0128 from both sides and now it equals zero and we have a quadratic equation. So we can use the quadratic formula to find out what x is and so I will plug in negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c and that is all over 2a. So when I solve this I'm going to simplify everything under the root first and then I will end up with negative 0 0.24 plus or minus 0 0.47 and that's going to be over 6.4 when I simplify this. Now I'm going to get two values for x. x could be negative 0 0.11 or x could be 0 0.0359. You're never going to choose the negative value and you're also not going to choose the value that when you place it in the equation up here for x, you should not end up with a negative value here either. So I'm going to choose this as my value for x. And so we want to know for carbon monoxide specifically, what is its partial pressure at equilibrium? So I'm going to plug in x here, and that's going to give me 0 0.08 minus 0 0.4. 
0.0359 and that equals 0 0.044 and remember that this is molarity. Now that I know the molarity of the carbon monoxide at equilibrium, I can use my PV equals NRT equation and I want to know what's the partial pressure so I'm going to divide both sides by volume and that's going to give me P equals NRT over volume. Notice here we have moles over liters which in fact is molarity. So I can plug in my molarity here and so pressure will equal 0 0.044 times R 0.0821 times the temperature 1650 degrees Celsius plus 273 to make it Kelvin. And when I do this math, I get a pressure equal to 6.957 atmospheres. And that is my partial pressure of carbon monoxide at equilibrium. A solubility product which uses the equilibrium constant Ksp is a concentration equilibrium constant. So it's a Kc for a saturated solution of a solid in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. So for example, if we had silver chloride solid, now silver chloride is actually considered insoluble, but actually everything is soluble to a different degree. So it is soluble, but it's just slightly soluble, so it reaches a point of saturation very quickly. So what you end up with is a solid AgCl at the bottom. However, some of the ions, very few, but some do actually dissolve and give us silver plus and chloride minus ions. And so what a KSP tells us is to what degree does this dissolve. And so we can solve these equations for the concentrations of ions or the concentration of the solid. So we're going to find the number of grams of silver chloride that can dissolve in one liter of water with this KSP value. And so what you're looking at is silver chloride solid yields, and then we'll write a dissociation equation, silver plus ions aqueous and chloride minus ions aqueous. And so keep in mind that that is what you would expect to see in a solution of AgCl where you would have silver chloride ions and silver ions and chloride ions and some solid left at the bottom. Remember that solids are not included in an equilibrium expression. So when I write this equilibrium expression we would have Ksp equals the concentration of silver ions times the concentration of chloride ions and of course we'll note on the side here that the Ksp is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 10. It is really important that you immediately write the law of mass action once you know what your equation is. That way you can reference it and make sure that you're plugging things in correctly. So here is where I'm going to draw my ice table because I'm not including this in my ice table. And initially we're going to say we have zero of both of these. And then we have a change of positive x, positive x. And so at equilibrium, this is x, this is x. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in these values with my in my law of mass action, and I would get 1.9 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x times x, which of course is the same thing as x squared. So if I take the square root, so this is the same as x squared, so if I take the square root of both sides of the equation, I get an x equal to 1.378 times 10 to the negative 5, and that's molar. Now, I want you to recognize that this is what x equals. However, what you want to look for is the ion that's in a 1 to 1 ratio with the solid, because if this is the molarity of my silver ion, this is also equal to the molarity of my silver chloride because you remember these are a one-to-one -one ratio. And you can even look at it like this. If this is the molarity of silver, then you can say, well, there is a one mole of silver to one mole of silver chloride, and therefore, this is also the molarity of my silver chloride. So the question is how many grams of this? 
am I going to add in order to get the saturated solution? And so we'll take 1.378 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, molarity is the same thing as moles per liter. And this is for silver chloride. And so I'll bring down moles. One mole of silver chloride is equal to 1, oh, sorry, 143.32 grams of silver chloride. Notice moles cancel, and I'll know how many grams per one liter of water equals, and I get a value of 1.975 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of silver chloride. Example 15.58, what is the molar solubility of lead 2 chloride solid in a saturated solution if this is the KSP value? That's kind of another way of saying how much or what molarity of this is going to actually dissolve if this is the KSP value because lead 2 chloride is actually an insoluble compound or is typically considered insoluble. But it is slightly soluble, so it will give us a few lead ions and a few chloride ions. And notice I wrote two of them because it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So I'm going to write my equation, PBCL2 solid, and it will be in equilibrium with lead 2 ions and two chloride ions. That's very important to make sure you've got your coefficients correct. It's a one to two ratio. I'm going to go ahead and write my law of mass action. Do it first. It's very important. KSP equals will have the concentration of the lead two ions times the chloride ions squared. See why it's important to make sure you've got your coefficient correct. Otherwise you wouldn't have that this is supposed to be squared. And then we have a KSP value of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. So when we draw our ice table, we do not include the solid. So I'm going to write my ice here. And we're going to assume we start out with zero of these and all of this. And then as the process of dissolving occurs, we're going to have plus x and plus 2x, another reason why it's so important to get that coefficient correct. So this is going to be x, this is going to be 2x. So when I set up my law of mass action, I'm going to have 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 equals, notice lead is x, and here's another reason why it's really important to focus on your law of mass action. We're going to put 2x here, and it's going to be 2x squared. This is the most common mistake is not squaring this value as well as including the coefficient in our ice table. So now, let me simplify this. 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 equals, we're going to have x times, let's go ahead and square these. It's going to be 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x is x squared. And now I can combine these, and I get 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 equals 4x cubed. I'm going to simplify this, divide both sides by 4, as well as, that cancels this, as well as take the cube root of both sides of the equation, which cancels that. So I'm going to get an x value that is equal to 0 0.0162. And remember, this is molarity. And if you want to see it as this, this is my lead plus 2 ions. However, there is a 1 mole of lead ions to 1 mole of lead chloride ions. Therefore, this is also the molarity of my lead chloride. And that is going to be the concentration you would need of lead chloride for you to get a saturated solution with this value of a KSP.